Good evening. The owner of a warehouse in Sheffield says he's had to fork out a quarter of a million pounds to clear up tons of waste dumped there by a rogue company. Yeah, this is just a snippet of what Giles Norton says. That the waste dates back to years and has uh, clearly been stockpiled elsewhere before being dumped on him. Tom Ingle has been to meet him and seen the shocking state of the warehouse. Imagine this. You own a large warehouse in Sheffield. You lease it out to a company who appear above board. Two months later, you open the doors. They've gone, and you're left with thousands of bales of non-recyclable rubbish, packed floor to ceiling. You have to clear it away. That's what happened to Giles Norton. What on earth are we going to do with this lot? Will someone help us? Is there some assistance? Is there anything, anyone out there that could offer us anything? So you went back to the company, I imagine, but... The company by which time then it dissolved, amazingly enough. So, of course, there was uh, no liability there. But we did have a personal lease against uh, the gentleman in question. We obtained a county court judgment. The bailiffs attended the properties, only to be discovered no longer there. So you can see that the types of rubbish that we are, plastics, etc., dating back to 2006, over 10 years old, which means that this rubbish is being stored somewhere ready to be dumped illegally. And it's just going on and on and you on. You can see as we're walking down it, the amount of rubbish involved. Slowly, Giles is shredding the bales. The mulched mess then gets shipped out for burning. He's only halfway through, and it has already cost a quarter of a million pounds. The people who dumped this rubbish here didn't just leave it in the unit they had a lease for, they knocked down a wall and moved it in there as well. This over here was an office and they put bales on top of it, but the structure actually collapsed. Not only is Giles having to pay the cost of cleaning all this rubbish up, he's still being asked for business rates as well. Look at the state of it. The test is, is it fit to be occupied? It's not fit to be occupied apart from pigeons and rats, to be frank. And yet I'm paying near enough a thousand pounds a week for the privilege of potentially renting this out. Giles is not optimistic there will ever be another tenant here. What had seemed a sound business idea has become a waking nightmare. Somebody else's buck has stopped with him. Tom Ingle, BBC Look North, Sheffield. Gosh, the amount of rubbish there is really jaw-dropping, isn't it? And joining us now from Salford is Will Bushby, the Head of Regional Policy and Engagement for the British Property Federation. Um, Will, we've seen uh, Giles there in his warehouse filled with rubbish and abandoned to the rafters. How common is this type of behaviour? Well, sadly, Giles isn't unique. Uh, we're seeing fly tipping happen across the country more and more often, especially in and around warehouses. Now, we, I'm from the British Property Federation, and we represent property owners across the country. And they're saying that million, this is costing them millions of pounds in recovery and clean-up, loss of leases, delays in leases, and also paying empty rates. We don't think it's fair. Uh, Giles went through all the correct uh, legal procedures, he had all the correct checks. Is there any type of protection for landlords like him in this unfortunate situation? Sadly, legislation doesn't protect the private landlords, it lands on them, so the book la st stops with them. They have to pay for the cleanup. Um, so we're asking government to actually take this seriously and actually help private landlords, because at the moment it's not fair the way it is. Uh, and in terms of the local authority, what more should they be doing to help people like Giles? Sadly, local authorities aren't doing enough at the moment. They need to work more close, closely with the police to try and find these perpetrators um, and try and reclaim the cost back for landowners. But sadly, that's not the case at the moment. It's so, costing a fortune. So you think if the police were, were more heavily involved, then we could stop people doing things like this? Yeah, sad there are fines, but they're too low. So the police do need to step up and work with local authorities because it is costing a lot of money to insurers as well. So AXA claimed that it cost one claim, cost them £1.7 million recently. So this isn't pocket change. So what do you think needs to be done to improve the situation, Will? Yeah, we need government to take this seriously. We're willing to work with them to try and sort it, but it's, it needs to really help businesses in the short term because it's damaging local economies, it's damaging people, and it's damaging local environments. So we need government to step up. Thank you for joining me.